So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to clean our code. Oh my god, I procrastinated doing this for the longest time because it's just boring to do, but you have to do it. I'm so happy that I did. It just looks better. It gave me an opportunity to overview the code. And hopefully I can now write better code from the get-go. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to sit here and type everything, but I'm going to tell you what I did. And then I really, really, really recommend you to do it. Don't just look at me or get my file, even though you're going to get my file. Just do it. It is painful to do, but it's worth it. <laughs> okay, so you think here I have my unclean code. So the one that we've been writing, horrible code, to be fair. And this is the one that I spent a few hours, quite a few, trying to get clean. As you can see, the difference is is noticeable just by looking at it. Just easier to the eye, more space, better. So, <laughs> okay, so the first thing I did was the import. There are uh, recommendations on how to import packages, the order in which you write the import. First, they tell you to import them all in the beginning. I actually asked on Twitter, why would you do that? Because I thought it was actually better to imported that where it was used in case that if you remove the the part of where that code was used you could actually get rid of the package too but obviously it gives better visual visibility if you have them at the top easier to know what packages are installed and there are actually packages that allow you to you know, see if there is anything that is being imported that is not used. There is also a package that you can even install that will clean the data for you. I think it's called like pip, pep8. Don't use it for now. Just do it manually. You will learn a lot. And uh, yeah, so what they say is that first you put the packages that come from Python and they time and time come from Python. So those are the ones that you put first. Then you put the third party packages. So it's matplotlib, you know, pandas, all that stuff. And then you put the packages that you create yourself. The ones that we're going to create ourselves, we're going to put them here at the bottom. Okay? So that's the first thing I did. The next one is I looked at all the function names. They say that you should have like a convention of how your functions are called. So for example, get username, get database info, get all tables, and then we go to plot. So we know right ahead, you know, just by looking, we know, okay, this is getting information, this is actually plotting things, this is posting information or whatever it is, right? So you, you have a name convention that you apply across. <laughs> it's a pain to keep. I mean, it takes quite a lot of brain power too for me to decide on names, but I went through all of them. The next thing that they tell you you should do is to document your function. So with a little bit of text, just write what this thing does. So it's for you and for future users. They recommend to write it like this, uh, but I don't particularly like that. I see people that write it like that and I prefer it. So the more white space we have, the easier it's for me to read. So I've decided to do it like this, but you can choose how you do it. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of spacing in between, which it makes it easier to read, that's the only thing. Now, when it comes to naming things, what a mess. So in the beginning, I was using capital letters for variables. That is a big no-no in Python. So all variables are lowercase with underscores. So here, real Python has actually a nice table that provides a good overview. And they say function is lowercase with underscore, variable is the same. Here is the class. It has uh, uh, camel casing. Uh, then we have uh, here the constants are uppercase, the only ones are uppercase, and then modules are also lowercase and packages are lowercase. Okay, so um, yeah, the, I had to change, uh, you can see with the code that I did that in the beginning and then I didn't do it anymore, so obviously I read somewhere that you don't do it. 
So I change all of that. Now, when you are changing something, this is what works for me. Otherwise, your code is going to break. So uh, this is the unclean one. So you see here, participant. I did Control F, participant. And then if you expand this, you can actually write whatever you want to have, participant below. And then replace one by one. Don't replace everything because you never know, right? So you want to make sure um, you do it like this so you don't break. And I was running the program after each block just to make sure that I didn't break, which of course I did and I was, had to be careful. Now, another thing that you need to do is to make sure that if the variable name can be self-explanatory and you don't have to write a comment, it does better. So here it shouldn't be participant, it should probably be participant name. And then you go, you run it again, right? Participant and participant name. So, yeah, those are the things that you need to think about and you need to go through the entire code and change it. Okay, so I had a huge mess on how I call the pandas table. So I actually went through all the pandas names and changed them to what I thought it would explain what the actual step was doing. Not sure if I did it very well. Another thing that I've seen, I've seen this especially when I was working with Matplotly, that they expand the function. So you, you like, you know, step in and create a new step for each part. And I think that it makes the code a lot more readable. So I did that where I could do it and it made sense to do it. Um, so all my matplot leaves are like expanded, right? Another thing they tell you is like, don't put like, for example, x1 and then a number. Like, what is that? So here is you say, the numbers are the, probably this should be, oh my God, this should definitely be, Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to control F and then open one. And this is SQL. I think it's longitude first. And then I'm, we're going to replace it. And then YM it should be SQL latitude. And then, well, it should be actually SQL city. That's what I do. Oh my god, it was such a pain. So replace, 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 and then we have to go here, control F, control F, and then SQL CT longitude, and replace, replace, replace. So as you can see now, this is not a secret number. Like, what does 95 mean? Well, it's the SQL city longitude, then is the SQL city latitude. That's what they mean with Pythonic code. You read it and you understand it. And obviously, I didn't do a very good job, as you can see, but I, I, I did clean a lot. You're going to get the file and you will see. I truly recommend you that you clean the file yourself first, and you, then you compare with mine and see if you get any ideas or you see things that I did wrong, just let me know. Yeah, here also x, y, well, it says it here, so then we're safe. And what else did I do? Add the spaces and functions. And that's basically what I did. I think the rest of the code is quite nice. So now for byte 12, we were going to split things in functions, but I changed my mind. I've been doing all the Python projects on the side, and I think we need to start creating environments first. I'm going to tell you what an environment is. I'm going to show you how to create it. And then once we have created our game environment, then we're going to do our um, our modules, splitting the modules. So we're not going to code the game for a while, but I think this is very useful to know and to understand. So next video, it will be environments. I will see you then.